Hi, everyone. So I want to give you guys um, just some brief historical context of Martin Luther King's letter from a Birmingham jail. So if you've never heard of this document, um, it, it resulted from the civil rights movement in the 1960s. Um, and in 1963, um, King Martin Luther King was invited down to Birmingham, Alabama to stage a protest, a nonviolent protest against the way um, blacks were being treated in the South and some of the segregation policies in the city uh, specifically. And when he, um, he went to Birmingham, he staged his protest and then was quickly arrested and put into jail. Um, and uh, shortly thereafter, um, eight uh, white clergymen that lived in the city of Birmingham wrote a letter in um, one of the local newspapers, and they criticized um, King's uh, participation down in the South. They were kind of frustrated with him and said that he really didn't have, he was an outsider coming in and kind of meddling in their affairs down in the South. And so King only learned about the letter um, when a friend of his smuggled the newspaper into his jail cell. So when King was in jail, he was basically in a cell with nothing with nothing else with him. And so um, when somebody smuggled in a, a copy of this letter, it was called um, A Call to Unity, I think was the title of the clergyman's letter. And King then proceeded to do a response to these white clergymen's kind of critiques of his participation in, um, in Birmingham. And that uh, his response was, this is I think part of the amazing part of this letter. It was actually written on little tiny scraps of paper in the margins of this newspaper that King would write and then give them, kind of smuggle them out, give them to uh, somebody who was visiting him. And then um, later on, somebody compiled the whole, um, the whole document into what we now know as letter from the Birmingham jail. So as you're reading that, I want you guys to kind of think about that writing process of this document document that King didn't have any reference materials or any books. And so all this stuff is kind of coming from his memory, um, from the, um, from all of the, uh, scholarship he had done in terms of, um, kind of his own kind of Christian faith and then other pe other faiths as well. And then his just kind of command of, of the facts of, um, of American history and of, uh, the different ways that the black people were being oppressed at the time. So, um, as you're reading that, I want you to kind of think about how this was all just written on these tiny little scraps of paper and smuggled out and then later on compiled. Um, so I think that's a pretty remarkable writing process just to, just to kind of put that out there right away, despite the kind of phrasing and the beautiful sentences and the rhythm that happens in the letter. So this letter is what we would consider a point by point rebuttal. And the way that King organizes the letter is he takes each one of the criticisms from the white clergyman's letter and he refutes them. So he, he acknowledges the criticism and then explains um, his perspective and he does that again and again. So as you're reading it, um, kind of look at, look for each one of those points. So um, he, he first starts out here as outsiders coming in. Um, and so then he responds to, to that, um, that criticisms that the, the criticism um, that the white clergyman uh, placed on him. Um, and so he goes on um, throughout the entire letter to kind of move through. Um, here's, here's the second one here. Our acts are untimely. And then he responds to the untimely act. And so keep looking um, for each one of those arguments that the clergyman had offered, and then think about how he refutes those. The model of this letter, um, some of you might want to use for your position argument. So um, the point by point rebuttal technique can be very, very effective. Um, Okay, uh, the last thing that I want you to be paying attention to is the rhetoric um, of the letter. So consider how King is um, kind of thinking about his target audience, and I guess you can decide whether or not the target audience is the actual clergymen themselves, or maybe all of us watching this, um, watching what was actually happening in Birmingham. I think he's kind of got a dual audience here where he is definitely responding to what the clergyman had said, but I think he's almost responding in a way that um, is, he hopes the rest of the country kind of witnesses his response to their criticisms. And I want you to think about how he's trying to establish credibility, his ethos appeal um, with his audience, and then also look for all of the pathos appeals that you see throughout this, throughout this text. Um, 
And then, of course, along with the language, I want you to be paying attention to the sentence structures and the word choice, the diction choices, um, and how he kind of moves moves people through just his language itself. I think there are parts of this that are highly, highly quotable, and I'm going to have you guys look for lines that, that you think are especially powerful um, in your response for this um, reading assignment. Okay, um, so I think that's it. I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this. It's a long piece. It'll probably take you guys about an hour to read, but it is one of these documents that I think is well worth your time to read and to have kind of a working knowledge of, of this letter um, just in your kind of educational arsenal. Okay, you guys, we'll talk soon. Bye.